Italy is claiming progress in fighting the coronavirus. The race to contain the coronavirus. Coronavirus confusion has struck again with an L. The show must go. Find I must summon Nate. I got it. Have you ever heard of Ghost in the Show? Uh, you mean Casper the Cowardly Ghost? Um, Iron Man? I'm not much of a marathon guy. Uh, The Matrix. I know Kung Fu. There we go. Project Biomotus is a game where we'll be transhuman, biomechanical beings, and you'll learn program configurations, allowing yourself to perform advanced actions your mind on its own is incapable of accomplishing. Uh, wait, what? A brief lesson. Transhumanism is an umbrella term used in philosophy, technology, biology, and psychology. We'll explore these a bit more in the wrap up, but two core principles related to the game are what makes something human and the quest for immortality. Let me give you an example. You see me here. You've seen me in the past walking about. I had my large intestine completely removed. Am I still human? Am I still Conrad? Yes. I've lost a major piece of the human body, which when you define the body would contain that organ. Now, what if I lost all of my limbs? What if I lost my body entirely and my consciousness existed only inside this computer? Am I still human? Um, well, that, that's, a, that's a good question. I'm a system of data in a drive at that point. What if my brain is still intact and able to survive instead as part of the machine? Am I more human? More human than human. More human than human. Oh, so this is what White Zombie was talking about. The idea of transcending humanity and becoming immortal are ancient. Most people have heard of the fountain of youth. Transhuman psychology is a bit different than traditional psychology, where we usually focus on the ego or self-identity and how to grow. Instead, this practice examines humanity outside of that. I would look at my relationship with you and then define part of myself that way. And we change as a product of that interaction. I think I should have taken the blue pill. You know, just guys, plug me back into the matrix, please. But then your consciousness won't exist in a physical realm anymore. Ah! Now that I've planted those seeds, let's talk about the blue pills. Do we have to? Well, I mean, they can't be any more complicated than the human condition, right? You're totally right. <laughs> the rules are actually quite intuitive, in my opinion. We call the foundation the Tapum 20 system which stands for Tactical Action and Power Management, while using 20-sided dice. Every roll to check abilities, skills, chances, what have you, are all made using a single 20-sided die. Damage rolls will be made using six-sided dice. All right, cool, I got it. So uh, a 20 and a six-sided die. Uh, what about a character sheet? The community is quite active. And if you check out the Facebook or Discord, you can be pointed in the right direction. And uh, a backer, Darkson, has developed an Excel spreadsheet generator to populate your sheet for you, as you'll see in our playthrough. All right, I have my tools. Lay it on me, dude. Each role is modified by your character stats and then weighed against a static difficulty. If you roll a 10 or higher, you succeed and a nine or lower, you fail. Wait a minute, What what's the catch? First we dive into philosophy, and, and now this? Let me give you an example of what to expect. You have a ranged weapon, and after all your stats are added up, you have a plus 15 to attack with it. The target you're blasting has a ranged defense of 12. You now compare the difference. You have a 15, and they have a 12. So 15 the attacker minus 12 the defender results in three. You now roll a d20 with a plus three to whatever the result is. 
If you roll a 10 or higher, you hit. Ah, I rolled a nine. So plus three, 12, hit. Nice job, dude. Thanks. Now damage is where you utilize D6s. Each weapon has a rating that will have a number, let's say four, and then a number immediately following in parentheses, let's say one. The first number represents the total number of D6s you will roll. The second number represents how much of it is lethal damage. Huh, that's interesting. So why the distinction? Remember at the beginning when I said we'll be transhuman biomechanical characters? Uh-oh. You are a blend of mind and machine. Your body is extremely durable, and you have an organ called the Bioforge, always healing and optimizing you. So when you get hit, part of that will be called scratch damage to represent damage that will be shaken and recovered easily, while lethal damage is more severe and will take time and resources to heal. Huh, I sound badass. To take it up another notch, you'll have physical and energy armor, which will reduce the damage you take, starting with the lethal portion. Meaning if you roll five lethal, but my armor is five, no damage is done. So it's it's almost like if I had a BB gun and I shot it at, you know, maybe say Tony's car. The armor, the armor's too high to damage it, but somehow it'll it'll do a scratch and probably probably irritate him a little bit too. <laughs> That's actually a perfect analogy. One more thing. If you roll a natural 20 on the die, you automatically succeed well. And if you roll a natural one, you automatically fail poorly. So uh, so now I've got rolls down, uh, but, but how did Tapum get its name? That enters deeper into the combat realm. Your organic machine body is going to act with great speed and strength far beyond normal people. You have your core mind placed inside various bodies that have lots of modifications like a hover engine or six arms, as well as have these advanced programs operating called configurations. Activating these different abilities, as well as the plethora of attack actions within the core book, will cost action points. Okay, interesting, interesting. So attacking will cost a few of these action points, uh, but so will moving or, or switching on like a flight mode um, or, you know, releasing an electromagnetic pulse from my body. Yes. All of those will have set action point costs and the more advanced will also have forge point costs. Depending on your statistics, you'll also regenerate those points at different rates. So you will need to be tactical about your actions, considering the next time you get to act. So let me get this straight. I'm a futuristic being uh, comprised of some paltry organic matter put inside of this powerful battle machine. It's got this built-in program that automatically starts healing me and allows me to actively perform insane abilities like flying or like shooting missiles straight out of my body. Yep. Well, uh, well, dude, what are we waiting for? Let's play. Dang. Where are we going? Dang. 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 North. Welcome to Deacons and Dragons. Therapeutic benefit in role-playing games. Welcome to Deacons and Dragons. Oh yeah, baby. Your presence quested in exchange for treasures. Dang. 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 Red River. Are we talking one treasure each? Count that <laughs> Welcome to GGC Dragons. Today we are playing the game Project Biomotors by Bear Winters and take on the roles of transhuman biomechanical characters. Also, you may notice we are not playing from our usual spot and are playing online for the first time due to COVID-19. A big shout out to Darkson for creating the fillable character sheets allowing us to play from our devices. So, what? <laughs> yes, I understand that in itself, the uh, terminology is confusing, so let me give a bit of a background for the world itself and try to help clarify. Put on your science hats and strap in. We start on our own planet Earth with the development of quantum computing. If you've seen Ant-Man, you've heard the word quantum quite a bit to justify whatever they're doing. But we're going to look to physics and define it as the smallest quantity of radiant energy. So if we think of processing and storage, computers decades ago filled huge rooms. 
Today we have powerful computers in the forms of cell phones. If we followed the trend of being able to fit superior technology into smaller spaces, it isn't far-fetched to think that at some point in the future, we could have all the power and speed inside the gra a grain of sand. At least in my mind. That's what is happening when the book describes quantum computing making all previous storage obsolete. So, with this discovery, augmented reality and virtual reality progress to the point of creating virtual workspaces so people can simply work from home and enter a shared virtual office. We call redirecting our senses to this space a telecommute. Cool, right? Artificial intelligence, AI, becomes advanced enough to automate everything else. Travel, construction, music, you name it. Humanity relies on all of these things and thinks, excuse me, and think about places like schools now all delivering knowledge and easy education to everybody for very little cost. So all sorts of buildings and institutions are no longer needed, which ultimately make them repurposed for storage. Uh, so now apply all of that same technology to the military. Drones and computers are able to monitor and calculate all sorts of scenarios to keep people safe the easiest way possible. Crime goes way down, people are secure in their homes. So last step in this quantum revolution, the ability to store all of this information gets down to the cellular level and now medicine can form connections between molecules and computer data. So prosthetics react as if they were limbs. We progress to digitize the genome itself and the ability to create cures and vaccines with ease at this microscopic level. Okay, so does biomechanical character sound less confusing? It, it does for me. <laughs> so if everything is so advanced and easy, what are we doing? I'm glad you asked. Humans have developed unique cultures, religions, laws, and philosophy over thousands of years, and now suddenly the entire globe is completely connected. This bombardment has called into question the best practices and operations for humanity, leading to anger and fear. You're in your virtual office from America, but the next office over in your virtual space is from Zimbabwe, and next to that is Pakistan and so forth. All of your social media is basically live streamed and they see things that are illegal in their country, but legal in yours. And now what do we do? As you may have guessed, countries retreat back into themselves with politicians supporting nationalism gaining favor. This book has a fantastic outline story of how all these different countries create different objects and make these various moves, which would take a while to review and spoil how cool it is. So highlights, we have the creation of nanomachines. Scale-wise, that's like creating AI on the atomic level. This leads to the invention of something called a bioforge. You now have AI within your body that is always seeking to optimize you. You become faster, stronger. Illness is anticipated and cured. Wounds are healed rapidly. Eventually, the technology learned about procreation, <clears throat> the technology itself learned about procreation and passed on AI information. Humanity evolved to homo biomodi, where their bodies were being altered by nanomachines from birth. This is where we get the term transhuman from the beginning of my speech. This was pretty gradual and slow. So fast forward, eventually a group called the engineer adapted technology that would force the entire planet to evolve to biomodus. So complete integration of biology and technology. This effectively slaughtered humanity because millions upon millions couldn't adapt to that uh, and simply died. The same way went for animals and wildlife. So that's the whole opening speech. Uh, so now I guess we'll look at our individual characters. Um, the stats themselves have been prepared in advance but we're going to go over that a little bit and then we'll come up with our own backgrounds and names and cosmetics um, individually so first we'll just go over the character sheet in general so we have the name and player and case type so you essentially are this consciousness of organic matter that is put into a body and that's what we call the case 
So these come in light, medium, and heavy, as well as hominid, chimeric, and sentinel. So for your viewing pleasure, we have all three of these on display, as well as all three weight classes. So your core stats, production, adaptability, gnosis, and awareness, that's your mind. That's like the human part of you. So production is basically your Bioforge's output ability, the, the sheer power of your Bioforge. Oh. I just oh. shared I just shared my <laughs> screen so you guys can you guys can see. Oh. <laughs> this is what I'm reviewing. <laughs> uh, so and uh, so yeah, adaptability is your character's ability to as mentally as well as uh, on the nano machine level uh, adapt to different programs and uh, whatnot. So your gnosis is your it's kind of like your street smarts. Uh, it's your intelligence, uh, ment mental agility, uh, and awareness is, I guess that one's also a little more self-explanatory. Your awareness of what's going on around you and that, that'll that affect like your ability to perceive things and see in the distance and anticipate dangers. Now, your case stats are the body you're put into. So these can actually change if you do change your case. So you can move your core from body to body. We're okay. not gonna be doing that today, but that is something that's possible. And some people will actually collect multiple cases, like, oh, I need to do this today, I need to do this today. And they'll switch between those for those easy changes. Almost like how some rich people have like seven different cars and they'll drive a different car every day of the week, depending on what they're doing that day. I mean, it's... <laughs> Collection wise, yes, um, but the cases have a lot of different stats instead of just looking cool and sh showing off your wealth. Fair um, enough. So the so the case is speed, integrity, power, and control. So speed is the is your raw speed, and you'll see that uh, Tom over here will be it's Kid Flux is going to end up being his name, um, but he's going to be able to move <laughs> so fast uh, by comparison to these other people, especially too. Uh, he'll, he has this like pod racer thing where he can change into and essentially move like uh, a mile, <laughs> like a, a mile in like a matter of seconds. Um, but anyway, so back to that. So the speed is literally just your raw speed. Uh, integrity is, you know, your, your, uh, what's the right word? Your, your defense against degrading for a various number of reasons, whether that be physical attacks, computer attacks, uh, your, your structure ability to hold together and resist all of that. Your power is your physical power, so the, your ability to lift a boulder, per se, um, and control. Uh, you'll see, or in the character sheet that was on there, you did see it. So Nate had a high control. So he's like a tactile manipulator where he hacks into like other systems and stuff. And that's sort of control where it's, it's, I mean, it's in a sense, it's also literally control, ability to control other things, but you need special abilities for that. But anyway, so skills, we have combat skills and non-combat skills. Uh, melee, ranged, gunnery, interface, block, and evade. So the first half are basically your ability to attack, and the back half, your ability to defend, with the exception of interface, which that's your ability to integrate with other computers and technology and manipulate them. Does that also include like the, our ability to interact with one another, since we're all technology, kind of, sort of? Uh, no, actually, um, because the directly, like the R2-D2, like plug straight into a computer, yep. like that's, that's not something that all biomodi bio -mode have, uh, okay. let alone just the, the standard, like you guys are going to be super powerful people. And that's not like, the awesome. uh, so there actually is a social skill and that will determine your ability to interact with each other. 
um, that co- it's going to come up a lot more in not in our game because we're going to be blowing stuff up a lot. <laughs> but uh, non-combat, you have athletics, focus, pilot, repair, social, and stealth. Those are all pretty self-explanatory. Uh, athletics is exactly what you expect, like the ability to climb, run, jump, swim. Focus is, you know, like if you're a sniper, you're sitting there, like your ability to hone in on on the shot. Uh, piloting is piloting ships. Repair, repairing devices. Social, interacting. And stealth is being sneaky. <laughs> so moving on to action points, um, forge points. So through combat, we have action points that are spent with w- what we want to do. And I've prepared a list of maneuvers at the players all have in front of them. I'm not going to go over all of them right now, but just as an example, if you want to grapple somebody in combat, that will cost you five action points to initiate. So you have a maximum pool of action points at your start, and then you have a separate action point regen, which are also... Actually, do you want to pull that character sheet back up? So you'll see in the middle here, you have your threshold which is the left one, action points and forge points. Those are your maximum. And then each round, you have your regen right next to them. So during combat, that's when all of these come into play. Otherwise, you can just kind of do these things outside of combat. But you have your maximum. You use your action points or forge points to do things. And then each round, they will regenerate. So going down... Uh, actually, we'll, we'll just save all of that for combat. So you have modifications and configurations, which, again, also I've prepared all of those for everybody. You come with a few free modifications, and what these are essentially your literal physical modifications. So your arms, your legs, anything that can be like attached to your case is... A modification. Are you still? Uh, you still want the character sheet up? Uh, can you go to the next page? Sure. Uh, yeah. That's the next page. And go down one more. So all this whole list here. So <laughs> Nate has a lot of modifications. Uh, So he is going to be a sentinel, which is essentially a floating orb. And so you can see his his sentinel body there. And he also has part of, literally part of him, he has a drone that's just like connected to his brain that gets to be sent out. And he doesn't need to do anything physically to manipulate that. That's just actually part of his being. Uh, These other modifications you see here, like levitation drive. So where everybody else will have legs, he has a drive installed to his body that will just allow him to float. And otherwise, like your legs themselves are considered modifications. So they're just attached to your case. And that's why you can make them look however you want. Uh, And you can also have multiple sets of legs. You can just, if you have modification slots open then you can just keep attaching stuff to yourself uh your modification slots are decided upon character creation so we'll kind of just skip over that but you you have your starting amount and you have your free ones so arms and legs are considered free for purchasing um So, any questions on any modifications thus far? No, I don't think so. Not for me, anyway. Can I have more than two legs? You, you can have more than two legs. Do Do I have more than two legs? See. (laughs) So you don't. Um, I did consider doing that, but the the other free one I gave you was improved armor. Okay, I'm fine with that. Just beefier, (laughs) more beef. Um, okay, and then configurations is something else that you 
make at character creation and you can gain them uh, along the way. But these are essentially programs. So like, you know, Microsoft Office, uh, that's a program. So these are way more advanced versions of that. And your BioForge will activate these programs. Um, so for example, here we have projection, which I think that would be an easy one to relay, but you activate a program where you become a projector, basically. <laughs> you, you're able to make an image of whatever you want and sort of just shoot it out for somebody to observe. Okay, does that make sense too? All right, so we'll go through. So, sorry, I was talking and I had my mic muted. Um, so basically kind of to continue with the R2-D2 theme, that was kind of like when R2-D2 would like project the image of like Princess Leia. Correct. Type of a deal. Yep. Cool. Exactly. Cool. Uh, so yeah, now we'll just go through every every character. Uh, I'll just go in order. <laughs> 404. Um, so we'll just we'll start with Tony because he's the first person uh, on the video for me at least. We so got the cam dog cameo. <laughs> so the the archetype that. I had created for, for Tony here is sort of like the, the tank archetype. He'll have a lot of defensive abilities. So his case type is hominid heavy. Uh, so the hominid case is the closest to what we would recognize as human beings. And they're built the sturdiest. So that was also the reason why I was All right, hominid Stellar. heavy. So, and there are things that like you can only pick up or use if you're heavy in exchange for moving very slow. So uh, anyway, any questions on any of the stuff just off the bat, Tony, that you have? Uh, not at the moment. I have the uh, the PDF for the actual book up, so I'm looking over all the abilities you gave me right now. But uh, Okay, and then we'll actually, when we use them in combat, we can go over that. Oh, definitely. Uh, so just... You know, quick quick overview. Tony has uh, the most powerful armor of of the group. <laughs> um, he is the highest starting armors. He has armor that reduces the how hard things come in. He can coat his weapon with extra layers of of metal. So if you imagine like all the nano machine stuff, like his body from his person like part of that armor will just sort of like form over his weapon to give it like an extra layer of so armor and i'll also defend with that just take out a brush start painting metal on yourself <laughs> yeah so the so you i see you're you named yourself 404 which is yes <laughs> because my enemies are never found after i'm done with them <laughs> awesome <laughs> Love it. Uh, uh, 404's uh, physical appearance uh, is is that of a minotaur, for all intents and purposes. Uh, he, or it pretty much looks just like a giant minotaur wearing like full plate armor for all intents and purposes. Um, and uh, it says uh, your char your character sheet says I have a huge weapon, so I am determining that is going to be a giant axe. Awesome. So yeah, in the, the equipment section, they, they kind of give you broader type things. So it's, it says like light weapon, medium weapon, heavy weapon. And from there, you choose like the cosmetics of it. So there aren't different stats for heavy mace, heavy axe. It's just, you have a heavy melee weapon. What does it look like? And so Tony is opting for that to be a giant axe. Double-sided. Oh, of course. Yeah, glowing orange. <laughs> uh, so anyway, yeah, so that's kind of what we're doing now is just the, the cosmetic aspect of the, the things we have. So, and, and color-wise, just like all black or? Um, probably like a deep auburn kind of mahogany color. Rich like mahogany. Kind of you would, yeah, rich mahogany. My apartment smells of rich mahogany. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, sweet. So go to JT, 
uh, here the the archetype is I was imagining just solo survival and all the different things you would need to do out in the wild. So it's the the all around character. So it has the the most like variety of skills. The only one with any social skills. Um, and I like this- how you picked the random person you got on that's not part of the group as the social one. <laughs> really stretching <laughs> to out. To be fair, the person who was originally the all around was very social. Uh, so the the abilities and stuff too. I like. There's one actually called Shock Knuckles. So as soon as I saw that, I like really just sort of leaned into punching stuff, <laughs> um, where you you are dependent on ammunition for any like long range weapons and stuff. And I was thinking, yeah, this the solo guy who's surviving, close quarters, everywhere. Uh, so the shock knuckles add to unarmed. Then there's a configuration to electrify to further do even more electric damage. So base and with the fist itself, I also attached a launcher drive, so the fist can be projectile shot <laughs> out. So anything, anything and everything will be punched. Uh, also, I think the highest action points. Sorry, the second highest. No, the speed is the highest. But but basically, like the second best at like everything. Um, so, JT, do you have any questions about the character sheet or anything off the bat? No, not currently. Okay, cool. Um, and, oh, sorry. And case-wise, medium hominid here. Uh, so, I guess just the cosmetics, like what, what do you look like, your name, um, you know, be whatever you want. Uh, well, since, you know, in this case, he's looking like a normal uh, humanoid, two arms, two legs, especially since he has two arms and two legs, part of his uh, attachments. Um, <clears throat> say he is pretty much just wearing uh, baggy cargo shorts that just go a little bit over his knees and nothing else. Um, maybe uh, some sort of uh, anime scarf bullshit. <laughs> it's it's like <laughs> like ten feet long. Yeah, let's go with that. Let's let's go with that. Always floating. <laughs> uh, high ponytail that go that drapes a little bit uh, past the bottom of his neck. Uh, some bangs. Um, eyes that are really glowing white, like they're LED kind of things. Um, so like think exos from destiny kind of uh eyes okay um and kind of like his face is a little bit segmented like kind of like uh, handsome jack's mask so but so you just see some lines so it's a little bit separated but it looks like it's part of the same face kind of thing so yeah that's kind of what he looks like uh person wise and i've been debating a name and i think in honor of uh of old anime robot beat him up that I saw a long time ago. I named Kashern from Kashern Sins. All right, nice. All right, Kashern, I like that. Uh, do you see the... In the... I'm currently doing that. Okay, cool. <laughs> All right, so moving on to see Strix, Nate. All right. Uh, so the archetype for Nate was really just the where so much AI and everything was the that the hacker um, so Nate has the the most he has basically the most configurations and and modifications going on um, so he's he's got like let's see Latin gave Nate the most complex character right <laughs> Nate's also the only one that I like force a background upon. So like as part of the the game, you you have the option to choose from a variety of backgrounds that have both a positive and negative aspect to them. Um, so I made Nate a Typhometi missionary, and within the lore of the game, the Typhometi are from. Uh, so the UK became like very isolated and. There were all these like forcible experiments that went on, so they actually evolved a little bit differently than everybody else into what's called the, these Typhometi. 
Uh, and the ability that he gains is called Painless. So if you remember back to the middle of the page, we had the Forge points there. So he can spend a Forge point every round to just recover health. Um, so within the, the the grand scheme of the game, that is is pretty powerful. You You typically need to consume something in order to regain uh, that sort of health. And the downside of it is people are can be healed by like nano gel, uh, med tech, like the words that they use. Uh, but that can be applied to you, but uh, none of that actually works on me. <laughs> uh, but it doesn't really matter because he can heal, he can just heal himself. Cool. Uh, uh, so, <clears throat> Yeah, so he's got, he's like really, he's, he's a sentinel and he's heavy. Uh, so he's, he's just a gigantic floating orb with, I did give him arms. So he has yes. arms and fine manipulators. So he has like the, like, tentacle thing that's, that's tiny, uh, that extends out and can just like plug straight in and stuff. Uh, so Nate, any questions on what you're seeing here? No, I, I guess the only question um, is on the actual, like, um, the case itself, the body itself. Is it like, because um, there's kind of, I was reading through the Sentinel uh, lore or Sentinel um, description in the PDF, and it doesn't quite say, like, so it's an orb. I'm assuming it's it's like a robot type of an orb, and it's not like this gl just glowing type of a energy orb, correct? Well, also to interject i just actually read uh, your background what it is um apparently you are also not able to do anything with technology everything you have is organic like an exoskeleton of bone kind of thing so cool. that was that really interesting question. cool yeah All right. <laughs> yeah yeah so you're you're like so jarring to look at uh, by <laughs> I, I'm now imagining like a Zerg overlord. Yeah. Actually, now that I think about it, the Sentinel and the uh, organic, we'll call it, background is a bit of an odd mixture, but it sounds really cool creative wise. Yeah, like I was picturing like Lord Zed from Power Rangers, where he's like, yeah. okay, yeah, like, all right, fleshy guy, but like, yeah, has that whatever's going on i think it's it like an exoskeleton yeah, yeah no, i know what you're talking about so you're yep. that except like a massive orb with, with arms excellent <laughs> excellent cool no it works for me um and then for equipment it looks like i was given um so it says hack two pieces um and then the note says it's a medium shotgun yeah that's what i named <laughs> your shotgun okay so that's the name of the shotgun all right cool um yeah. So yeah, medium shotgun. Um, yeah, we'll 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 make it black with some silver trim around it, um, like maybe the silver trigger stuff like that. Because I want the the exoskeleton uh, is going to also be like this silver, like chrome type um, type thing, and all the fleshy bit, bits underneath will be kind of like the sickly pink color that uh, you know makes it really really jarring for people to look at me. <laughs> I like that. All right, cool. So that's Strix. Uh, and finally, Tom, Kid Flux over here is going to be the the not only the light case, but the chimera case. And what they are is like the, the most animalistic by comparison. So like they're they're flexible and like you can like bend, like they come in a large variety where they can look like raptors or snakes or, you know, just basically they're, the structure is is a bit looser and easier to manipulate. Uh, so he also, for his free, has a tail, um, which will, for visual purposes, uh, which will help with athletics and you know being able to to move around. So the archetype here is the speed character. So just his off the bat, I know that these these numbers are numbers, but your so your base move is in yards so we have the other characters their base moves are 12 5 and 4 that's and again in yards uh tom's here is 60. <laughs> so he's moving wow his base move 
So in feet, that's 180 feet where the, the next fastest person in the group can move 36 feet in that same amount of time. Okay. Uh, to make things even cooler, um, I gave him this modification called the transport drive, which basically turns him into a pod racer. <laughs> um, if you do so, that, please say now this is pod racing. <laughs> I will leave this group if that doesn't happen. <laughs> Um, now it won't be as majestic. Let me see the actual. So the, so to again when so once you do that, there's there's three speeds in pod racer mode, which are your starting speed is your adjusted move sixty times five, so that's three hundred. So you're now moving nine hundred yards at base speed, and you've got cruising times ten and top speed times fifteen. <laughs> So, so that's, was, uh, that's some fast, uh, fast moving there. Yeah. So, and, and at these speeds, you get like collision damage. So you can just rock it into people. <laughs> so you can just move absurdly fast. Um, and normally when you're in pod racer mode, you can't fire weapons because you're moving so fast and focused. But I also made his weapons internal. So they're just like part of the body. So the arms themselves, uh, one one arm has a melee installation and the other has a uh, light range installation, which you know you can just describe how those are gonna appear. And configuration wise, you can then split his limbs. Uh, so that takes like you know points and, and whatever too, but these internal weapons uh apply to every limb so when you split your your arms you now also have two melee weapons two range weapons and you can further split uh it's just the strain on your body will be astronomical uh, but it's possible so again so this is like kind of like the, the the vision for the chimeric uh you know really transforming the body a lot um at will and being, you know, light and fast through through all of it too, with, uh, with all of that. So, uh, any any questions uh, with any of that? Oh, I'm sure I'll have some as we as we keep going. But I dig it so far. Dun dun dun! We're opening the combat. <laughs> oh, yeah. okay. 